In this video, we're going to continue to explore the idea of adaptation, and in particular, staging dramas, which basically transforms them from a written medium to a performed medium, like a film or a play. First, let's review some definitions. Adaptation itself is the transformation of a literary work from one genre or medium to another. And as I said, in this particular case, we're going to be focusing on adapting a drama by turning it into a performed example. Even though dramas are meant to be performed, as you move from the text version to an actual staged adaptation, you're making a lot of decisions and specific interpretations that influence the meaning of the text. And also in many cases, contemporary adaptations change the time frame or the setting of an original work to add additional meaning that is appropriate for the new cultural or historical context when the play is being performed. To analyze uh, film or stage versions of dramas, we also want to think about a few other things. Blocking, which is just the position of actors on stage in relation to the setting and the audience and each other for that matter. And the delivery, which is the way an actor speaks lines. Delivery includes emotional elements of speaking the lines, volume of voice, nonverbal communications, all of those decisions that actors make as they deliver lines. When you're looking at an adaptation of this type, there are a few steps you can follow to help you analyze it. First, read the original. Second, watch the adaptation. Third, identify the situational context of the adaptation. So in other words, uh, what, what's the time period that it is being set? What are some of the elements of the specific setting? In what way is the context for the putting on the play being represented? Then you want to watch it carefully and explain how significant examples of blocking and delivery contribute to the meaning. And then finally, you want to analyze or evaluate significant differences. For our example, we're going to use an adaptation of Antigone that was staged in London in 2012 in the National Theatre. To read the original, that would be Sophocles' original play. That's already done. We did that in Unit 1. So we're not going to be able to watch the entire adaptation. That's not available. We're going to watch a clip uh, in a second. But first, we're going to actually kind of skip over that step for the moment since we don't have that full um, adaptation available to us. Uh, and we're going to look at a still that'll help us with the situational context. And then we're going to watch a clip and then we'll talk about the blocking and delivery. So we're going to go a little bit differently in the order here. But again, in uh, an actual situation, like with the ones you're going to do on your own later in the unit, you'll be able to watch the adaptation. Here's a still from, from the play. We can use even just the visual hints that we have here to help us identify that situa situational context. For example, the costume suggests a more contemporary than classical Greece time frame, right? You've got uh, a man in a you know, white shirt and a tie. Uh, there's also a, a figure in military type uniform. There's another uh, man in a suit. There's a woman in a dress. And uh, so we can tell from this that it's a much more contemporary time frame than the original play. The setting itself is representational rather than naturalistic. That is, there are uh, visual cues that suggest a full setting rather than having extremely detailed sets. So for example, we have desks and papers that suggest some kind of bureaucratic operation. Uh, and there's also this lack of digital technology that su suggests to us probably like mid 20th century in terms of our specific time frame. Just even looking at visually how this is set, how this is staged, uh, gives us a sense of what's happening with this adaptation. Do you admit it? Are you guilty or not? Yes, I'm guilty. I don't pretend otherwise. You, soldier, get out. You're cleared of all charges against you and free to go back to your unit. Now, tell me. Simple yes or no. Did you hear of my order forbidding the burial? Of course I heard it. How could I not? And yet you dared to disobey the law. I honour him dead as I loved him living. There's no shame in that. And the one he murdered, wasn't he your brother? My mother bore them both and I loved them both. If you honour one, you insult the other. Neither of those dead men would say that. The Teokins would. His brother was a traitor. Does he merit no greater respect than that? But he was not an animal. They both died together and they were both men. Yes, and the one died defending his country while the other traitorously attacked him. The dead have their rights. And we have our duties towards them, dictated by common decency. And if good and bad are to be honoured equally, where are our values? 
patriotism, duty. Death is a noble country. Such things may not be valued there, may even be crimes. An enemy is still an enemy, dead or alive. No, I was born with love enough to share, no hate for anyone. Oh, very well, share your love by all means. Share it with the dead. I wish them well of it. When we take a look at that clip, we can see a few things. So in terms of the blocking, there's the physical restraint of Antigone that's exercised by the guard early in the scene, but she's pretty quickly released. And then as she and Creon are arguing, there's this physical distance between them that's maintained, like as if they won't come any closer to each other. There's also a really interesting dynamic where Creon moves more, that is to say, his motions are more pronounced, but Antigone is a more still character on the stage. There's almost an invisible wall that she's not willing to cross and a tautness in her physical carriage compared to the much more relaxed way that Creon is behaving. And then of course there's reactions of the background characters and we can't, can't see a ton in the way that this is filmed, but you definitely can focus in on that and get some ideas about the reactions of those characters. And then naturally there are those nonverbal cues signaling emotion by both Antigone and Creon, sometimes raised voice, uh, facial features, different cues that you know, we, we encounter every day that we can analyze in terms of you know, how these actors are playing Antigone and Creon. I'm just gonna play just one more bit uh, of a clip that is the actress who plays Antigone explaining uh, how she views the character a bit and that gives an idea about the delivery as well. So that's a really interesting piece. We don't always have access to this to this kind of information when we're watching an adaptation. But I think since, since it is available in this case, it can give you a good sense of how the decisions and the way in which the um, actor playing the character views that character really makes a difference in terms of the delivery of the lines. The way I play Antigone, has, there is no love lost there. I don't play her as if she feels betrayed or hurt by the fact that the family connection is not acknowledged in any way in our translation, which is Don Taylor. But there is that sense of it counts for nothing. The fact that their family counts for nothing in this, because as far as he's concerned, as a newly appointed king who has just come out of battle, like the war has ended hours before, and it's a civil war. And people's families have been murdered in front of them and his soldiers have died and he's literally, his leader has been killed. So he is given power and immediately has to make such a huge decision. The daughter of the king has betrayed the state. What do I do? And in a, it's a, in a sense, it's the blind leading the blind, which is then fascinating because Teresa is blind and comes in and tells everyone what they're doing wrong. But he has to stay strong. But in that, it's, it's as if he's met his match. So in that explanation, you can see how the, um, the political element is foregrounded rather than the familial element. And there is uh, an ideological battle between these two rather than something that is weighed down with emotions related to the family struggle. You know, she acknowledges that it is a civil war, that it's, you know, brother against brother, literally brother against brother in this case, but that that's not the focus. So, so that's really interesting. And knowing that information definitely informs how that actor is approaching um, the delivery of lines when she is playing Antigone. Just to help you understand um, delivery there and how the uh, approach that's taken by an actor really makes a difference in terms of how the character is represented on stage. The last piece is to analyze and evaluate the adaptation. And rather than giving a full reading, since obviously we didn't watch this entire adaptation, I just wanna leave you with some questions that you can use to interrogate uh, an adaptation of this sort, where you're taking an original work and uh, turning it into a staged or filmed production. So, you know, you, you do wanna think about, is it faithful to the original? Um, and not, not to be faithful for the sake of just being faithful, but, but to help identify those significant differences and think about the ways that, you know, when it does deviate, is there a purpose? What is the purpose? What is the effect of that, of that deviation? So that is a useful question to start with. What elements of meaning are emphasized through the dramatization? So, like I said, whenever you stage something, you are making a series of choices. And one of the types of choices you're making is what parts and pieces you're going to give emphasis and what 
you will not. So that's definitely something to keep track of. When it's a drama, um, if you're staging the entire uh, play, it, it's just a matter of what's highlighted. In other cases, for example, when you're taking a novel and turning it into a film, the producers and director will be leaving out elements of that novel. So that's a different case where when you talk about what elements are emphasized, that can literally mean what elements are included and what elements are left out or significantly altered. So that's another thing you definitely want to keep track of. Um, you want to think about new meaning for an updated cultural context and how that's reflected in the choices in the adaptation. So again, when you think about the staging of this one in you know, more modern dress and in um, a, a political context, as they're doing in this one. That is a new um, type of context and that affects the meaning. So that would be another thing that you'd want to track and to analyze. So hopefully that gives you a sense of the sorts of things that you'd want to take a look at when you're analyzing an adaptation that is a staged or filmed version of an original source, uh, play, novel, whatever, that then is being turned into that new medium.